Hello everyone. I am here to talk about a chapter of Daniel Dreisbach's book, Reading the Bible with the Founding Fathers. This is a particularly interesting subject, seeing how much the Bible influenced the founding of our nation. Okay, in this chapter of this book, Dreisbach speaks about the Bible and the lives of the American founders. Um, Dreisbach shows through many first sources and quotations from numerous founding fathers that most, if not all, of these prominent individuals were very well versed in the Bible. Even founders who were not considered to be very pious and were even considered skeptics, such as uh, Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin, were still quite versed in the Bible. Um, Thomas Jefferson even looking at Bible translations in multiple languages. Okay, uh, Mark Knoll, in his article, Did America Have a Christian Founding?, elaborates on Dreisbach's um, argument. Um, according to Knoll, as well, all of the Founding Fathers were well versed in the Bible and in the characters of the Bible and the lessons contained therein. Indeed, if we look more at the first sources of the Founding Fathers, um, the Bible and the characters in there seem to form a, 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 a sort of code. Um, for instance, someone talking about Delilah or Jezebel or um, Ahab meant very significant things. People who are well versed in the Bible understand them automatically what they're talking about. Okay, to continue this theme, Robert Middlecoff in his book, The Glorious Cause, um, states that Washington and the other founding fathers were the children of the twice born, meaning that they were born into a culture that was steeped in religion and in knowledge of the Bible. Um, the American founding closely followed on the heels of the Great Awakening, which had a large influence on the culture at the time. These founders, according to Middlecoff, did not shun the incorporation of religion and the Bible in their lives or the world that they'd inherited. Instead, they took the lessons of the Bible and the lessons especially about the rights that were guaranteed to us as humans and individuals and incorporated these lessons into their speeches and into their actions. Okay, on a side note, something very interesting that I found also in uh, Dreisbach's book shows how very closely the founding of our country and the Bible are interconnected. The president of the Continental Congress, according to Dreisbach, was a man named Elias Boudinot. Um, and in Mark Knoll's book, A History of Christianity in the United States and Canada, Elias Boudinot shows up again. After the Continental Congress and all of that, Elias Boudinot would go on to become president of the American Bible Society. Um, while he was president of the American Bible Society, he would meet a young Cherokee man named Kalakina Uetsi. Kalakina would take Elias Boudinot's name as his own, and Kalakina would eventually become friends with another man named Samuel Worcester, and the two of them would work to translate the Cherokee Bible. So, we can see that the Bible and the founding of our nation are integrally tied together. Whether or not the founders were pious or outright skeptical is kind of a big point, because the Bible was a common bond of culture in this time, and its relationship with our founding still shows to this day. Thank you all, and have a great weekend.